And uh, welcome once again to another edition of the Truth Hour. My name is Johnny Guzman. It's a pleasure to be here on this Monday, the 30th of April, 2012. Well, tonight's topic, sovereignty and the language. What does it mean, the language and sovereignty? Um, before we uh, bring in our good friend Santos Bonacci from Australia, just want to uh, mention that uh, during tonight's uh, topic, in discussion with Santos Bonacci, we're not encouraging anyone <laughs> or saying to anyone, hey, listen, abandon whatever it is that you're doing and become a sovereign and just not, don't pay more taxes. Don't uh, forget about your debt and just, you know, uh, and all that stuff because we don't want anyone to go to jail because these thugs will throw you in jail unless you're very well educated in uh, in the topic and, and, and you know what you're doing. I mean, I know of many uh, folks who have uh, become sovereigns overnight practically and uh, they've ended up in jail and lost, lost their homes and so forth. So what I'm, um, I'm saying is that just listen to the information, the Santos Bonacci is going to share with us tonight, research on your own, investigate, uh, and the most important thing is that you become aware of what is going on. So on that note, let's bring in our good friend Santos Bonacci. Good uh, evening, Santos. How are you? Hi, Johnny. Good, thanks. Okay, so tonight's topic, uh, sovereignty and language. And from what I understand, Santos, you just did a lecture on this. And uh, we've selected this topic as well, so you who are more educated in this topic can give this information to our folks. Uh, and as I mentioned just a, a few seconds ago, uh, we're not attorneys, nor do we claim to know everything, but uh, we don't want to sort of uh, mislead anyone or to create any conflicts in anyone's life. Just simply we want to share information because it is valuable information and to understand how the system has fooled us for so many years. So Santos, can we begin first with what it is, or what is, does the term sovereign mean? Uh, well, a, a sovereign is supposed to mean uh, someone who is not subject to um, other people with titles and is not one who is to do commerce. Commerce is what is going on out there in the world. Everything works on commerce, you see. Now, most people don't realize that. You see, most people uh, are educated to believe that we are free, living in a free society, and yet that is absolutely the opposite of the situation. The situation is this, the Vatican has placed every land under water, on, of the planet by the way, they've done this by means of certain things like all the obelisks that they place around the planet. So what they've done is they've put their pirate ships on the water and because of the, bench, the benchmark, the watermark that they put on their obelisks, what they've done is they've they've lifted the water, the level of the sea and and the, the catholic church you see has something called the holy sea that it administers so it's taken it upon itself to to put every land under water so it's taken sovereigns or just flesh blood people off the land into the water which they administer you see they run the seas you see so um, this is how we've been deceived and this is how it is that um, our sovereignty has been taken away from us and what happens then is they give <clears throat> they give one and all a birth certificate with a title on it you see that title is a slave title Mr. Santo Bonacci. What's a mister? Well, it's, it's a slave of Rome. You see, it makes me a citizen of Rome. A citizen is a slave. Or you could call it an employee uh, of the corporation. Now, I was born uh, in the Commonwealth of Australia. Okay. Now, the Commonwealth of Australia is a corporation registered in New York and I am considered to be an employee of that corporation you see so when they send me 
uh, a summons or anything like that or a fine. It's usually in an all caps name, all capital letters. Now, that's called um, capitus diminutio maxima, <laughs> which means maximum level of slavery. So when they send you these letters with all your capital names, that's they're treating you, and usually the tax department will send you a letter like that. <laughs> they're treating you as absolute slave of the system, an employee, and you must respond. Well, if you want to respond in, uh, as a citizen and as an employee, go ahead. Uh, I al always uh, uh, reply as a sovereign, and I re return their, their paperwork, and um, I'll let them know that no such uh, fiction dwells or lives at this place. Santos, see, at this Santos, there is a, a, for example, you just reminded me of something. Like, for example, when uh, a bank is soliciting for you to apply for a credit card, when they send you the invitation, let's say, your name does come with a capital S, a, a lowercase a n t o s, capital letter uh, B, but not for Bonacci. It comes as your real name, right? The moment that you apply for the card and you get the credit card, now all of a sudden the bills and everything come in capital letters. So, so are they uh, recognizing? I mean, that's a, a, a some somewhat of a proof, no? That they at first because they, you're not in in what it could be called a contract with them, they're sending you information under your real self. Would that be correct to say, Santos? Yeah. 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 yeah because when you accept their uh, credit cards and when you accept their um, their commerce uh, paper work, you see, your signature actually creates the money. And it's just digits in your bank account, really, out of thin air. Um, but, but now what they have is a contract with a fictional person that's going to pay with real money or real currency, and they're expecting you not to open your eyes to this deceit and you will continue then to pay all of that money back which is money that you created in the first place and on top of that you'll pay double or triple or quadruple in interest. So they've got a good little business going. It's a scam, it always has been. Rome has always perpetrated scams on people and this is why they've Rome has always been uh, proactive in selling you a citizenship to Rome as, as though it's a, it's a great thing with many benefits. Yes, you do get many benefits, but check out what the word benefit really means. <laughs> and then you'll realize that you don't want any of those benefits. You don't need any. And what we need to do, uh, what I'm teaching always in my lectures and presentations is uh, peaceful non-compliance. Get out of the world of commerce and be free. The world of commerce is slavery. They've dealt in, they've done human trafficking, they've done all sorts of trafficking, drug trafficking under this commerce and when you go to court all their laws are laws on commercial code, UCC. Without us realizing they've taken us off the land into the water and we're dealing in commerce. It's, it's it's quite a it's quite a shonky thing really when you think about it and um the system the whole system is is totally and utterly corrupt and even if there are good magistrates out there they're operating such a corrupt system that it must break their hearts if they're good men uh but of course the majority of them don't care they're making a lot of money they're living it up they're riding the gravy train now's their time People are not awake, so they don't care. <laughs> they're having a good time on, on on the sleepful state of mankind, and they're just making a killing. You'll find that they're all living in the best part of town with beautiful big houses and great big bank accounts in Switzerland. Well, well Santos, I had a conversation with, a, a, I would say, a pretty intelligent guy 
over the weekend, and I was explaining to him a little bit about the the fraud of the the income tax and the fraud of this whole thing of uh, of what they they they've thrown us, as you say, on on the on, on the ocean, you know. And uh, we're following this uh, what is called the uh, uh, maritime admiralty law. For those that are not aware of that, and. Uh, and, and, and it was very hard for him to to ca catch the idea that, what do you mean they threw us on the ocean? I mean, I, he goes, the last time I checked, I, I live on land. I mean, what are you talking about? And he couldn't understand this concept. So can you clear that up a little bit? What is what is a, a maritime admiralty law? And what does it mean when you say that they've thrown us on the ocean and now we have to abide by those laws of the sea? Yeah, well, we were born, none of us were born on a boat. Um, we weren't born on the seas. But the Vatican runs the Holy See. Now, we were born on the land, you see. And um, so we should be, we should be dealing with the law of each nation or land. But UCC, Admiralty Law, Maritime Law, that's a different code which deals with other nations and other vessels on the sea, on the high seas. So how did they make our bodies similar to a boat, similar to a vessel, so that they could contract with us? Well, that's easy. You see, when a boat comes into the harbour, with all its goods. There's a captain on the boat and there's all these goods and the captain comes from another another faraway country with different laws. It's coming to a, a country which has different laws also but they have to speak to each other and communicate with each other and they have to have a code, you see. So this, the Vatican invented this code. Now, when the ship comes in, it comes in to a dock. And then when you're born in a hospital, you come out of your mother's birth canal. That's B-I-R-T-H. But the boat births at the dock, and that is B-E-R-T-H. So the, the vessels are birthing. Your vessel, your body is birthing. And there's a dock at the harbour, and there's a doctor in the hospital. And, um, and the, the captain of the ship has to give a, a, um, a warehouse docket. Yeah, exactly, of manifest. And, and You've just been manifest. You come out of your mother's womb. No one has ever seen you before. All of a sudden, you're manifested on the, on the land. So, so they want the parents to inform to the government that all of a sudden, a new body has manifested. So your birth certificate is a, a certificate of manifest, you see, and it's a certificate of manifest so it's certified you see and that's what the the um the captain of the ship gives to the um the harbor the harbor um uh what's the word now i'm just not thinking right at the moment but that certificate of manifest it's a warehouse docket and that's what your birth certificate is you see you'll notice it's the original is written on bond paper you see, because they turn that into a uh, security on, and they, they uh, trade with that. They give that to the banksters to trade with that as a security on the stock exchange, you see. So you've been now, you've been turned into chattel, you see. So, and they put a value on that. So I think it's about seven or eight million dollars they buy that for. Seven million dollars. We're traded as slaves. That's what they're worth to the banksters. They go directly to the banksters. And um, the people who own that would be the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve own all the stocks in the world, all of them. You own no stocks on the stock market. They're all owned by the Federal Reserve. They let you think you own them. 
Um, <clears throat> and what it generates for them is around about $1.2 billion per uh, capita, per head. Yep, they buy them for eight, $8 million and they make $1.2 billion. So you see, this is how they've got us on the waters. We've been birthed, we have a certificate of manifest, there was a doc or a doctor there. Your parents were the informers. They were not the natural people, the natural man and woman who tell the government that there's this beautiful new baby on the land. They are the informers, you see. Uh, this is how the language has tricked us and seduced us to be a part of a system that supposedly has benefits for us. Well, they are benefits. But if you look at the word benefit, <laughs> you'll find that it means all sorts of things like going to jail, paying taxes. They're benefits. And they do result from being a citizen, an employee, or a slave of the Holy See. Santos, so, so when we begin the process of becoming a sovereign, right, and... Obviously, we need to understand this, and, and I would say, you know, to, to take it easy, not to just to jump in to, and, 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 uh, and do this overnight because they have all the guns and, and they run the courts, and it's, and it's very hard to, to, to beat these, these criminals in their court system, in their, in their law system. So what would be the, the primary thing for a person who's new at this, right? A lot of our audience understands a lot of this, this terminology that you use and the information. But a lot of the other folks uh, are not clear on this. So what would be the first step to become uh, on the path of a sovereign, Santos? Okay. Well, your listeners may, may remember a couple of months back, I was heavily promoting the document, the Denike Ultimatum. Now, I've used it. My son's used it. Many people around the, the world have used it successfully. But... Um, I have, and the person who originated the document has recognized that it is not the complete remedy. The complete remedy is on my website at the bottom of the front page of my website, and the documents are all there if one is looking for the complete remedy to lose the name and win the game. And um, I'm going to be interviewing the gentleman who, um, who has originated these documents, Mark Hollywood, and that will be an interview this weekend on American Freedom Radio. Now, you can download the documents and have a look at them. The Denike Ultimatum exposes the problem, but it is not the remedy. The remedy, for the remedy, one has to do two things. All of your paperwork that you submit into the court must be notarized and apostilled. Notarized by a notary, apostilled by the Governor General. Those documents now are certified. Certified meaning they are public documents, not private. You see, the system is running privately and publicly. The private system is you and me, you and I, flesh blood entities. We, we do contract between each other privately. This is flesh blood agreements and we honour those. The public, that's the system, that's the maritime UCC system that once you certify your documents, you have them notarized and apostilled, now you have legitimate um, documents that are certified that they must recognize in their system and you can pay for all, all of your, uh, your debts in the public to the government, your taxes, you can pay with them with your certified documents. You don't need and you should never pay with hard-earned cash. 
You see, this is the thing. This is the. This is why the system is so corrupt. Because if they told us these things, if they simply just went ahead and told us, "Hey, you can pay with everything with bits of paper. You can make your own negotiable negotiable instruments. You can pay for anything. You don't have to go to jail. You don't have to pay your taxes with hard-earned money. You can keep all your money. You can keep all your currency. If they did." Two things. First of all, they told us how the system works. It's public and private. And secondly, if the if the banksters were not printing the money, but our treasuries were printing the money, therefore there'd be no interest. If those two things were explained, we'd all be free. The only reason we're enslaved in this maritime system is because we're using banksters' money, which with interest. Therefore, we're always paying, paying that invisible 10%, which can never be paid off. And secondly, if we were told that we could just write up our documents, have them notarized and apostilled, and go into court and just say, oh, Mr. Judgey Poos, you want a uh, million dollars, do you? Well, there you go. Just turn the documents over, no, um, sign them, and you're paid. I'm out of here. Santos, but let me let me get something clear because I, I I'm personally not understand you understanding you. So we fill out these forms that we can find in your website, universaltruthschool.com, right? Yeah. Okay. So we find these documents, we go over them, and uh, we we get them notarized, apostille, and certified. And where do we send these documents? And what is the purpose of these documents once they receive them? What are we going to accomplish by sending these documents in? Well. Well, you just all you need to do is keep the documents with you on your person because you ha you now have um, documents that you can pay up to trillions of dollars um, of fictional money <laughs> in in their system. You now have you see because the only reason why they they throw you into prison is because you can't pay. That's why you're in court in the first place. It's all about commerce. They just want your money. You see, so, so because you, you don't know how to pay, when they fine you at the end of the court proceedings and they say, well, you owe the court $10,000, they're just telling you that if you know how to pay, um, that's all we want. We just want your money. But you see, we've been trying to give them that hard-earned cash that we have in our pockets from our bank accounts. No, that's, we're supposed to be keeping that for our transactions between, in the private between individuals. We're not supposed to be paying in the public. You see, if you have your certified documents, you can just go into court and just say, well, there you go, judge, there's, there's my documents. So they're certified, apostilled, notarized. You just have to sign it and you've got your money. And, and that is a legitimate way of paying. And that's the legal tender. That's the true tender. That's the true way of paying. The other way is illegal, but they accept that because it benefits them in the back pocket. They get, they get two payments. They get the original sum from your trust account, and then they get the hard-earned cash from your pocket because you don't know how the system works. <laughs> so and and by the way the judge doesn't mind if you go in there with your notarized documents and and your certified documents and you pay him. Oh, he doesn't get all your ca he doesn't get that extra cash but he's still paid and and it works and he cannot decline. He cannot reject. He cannot dishonor that payment. If he does, you can throw him into jail and have him arrested. That's how they get you arrested. They're just they're just businessmen. A judge, a, a magistrate is just a businessman. He can throw you into jail because his documents are certified and yours are not. That's how it, that's how it works. If yours are certified and he dishonors your payment, you throw, him, you throw his ass into jail. <laughs> but, but Santos, I mean, it, it, that, that's, that's easier said than done, I would, I, would, I would argue with you, because I was speaking to a guy, as a matter of fact, had him on uh, a while ago, one of the, the, the few, uh, very uh, beginning shows. His name is David Lindsay. He, he belongs to an organization. It's called Clear. And he said to me, he said, Johnny, I, I, don't, I don't know anyone 
that has gone away with, and, and apparently they've been doing this for, for quite a while. He said, I don't know anyone that has gone away with um, not paying property tax. Uh, they, they've all been thrown in jail. He says, uh, I, I do, I, he, he did recognize that it is, uh, there is a way not to pay income tax. He says, but uh, besides that, there's a lot of misinformation that we are we are given, and once we 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 uh, we go in front of a judge for X X reason, you know, you you end up in jail, and then what do you do? <laughs> or you end up in a big legal battle, and uh, you you end up losing your shirt, your in your your house and everything. So how how would how would you uh, clarify that a little bit? Okay. Um well, the reason why this happens is because somewhere along the line, they have not completed the procedure and perfected it. If one perfects the procedure like Mark Hollywood has done, and please check out the, stay tuned, American Freedom Radio, this week at end with Mark Hollywood. In fact, I'll give you the date. I, it's my Sunday at 8 a.m., Okay, but it will be your Saturday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Get everybody on this show, please. Mark Hollywood has been on with me on radio many times. Mm -hmm. You can you can find his archives on my website. Um, but this one will be special. Um, this one he will deal with perfecting the process. He will be dealing with the documents that are on my website. He will be. Um, showing people all the way through the process. But one warning to the listeners, uh -huh. and that is this. You must be prepared to lose all of your names. Okay. What, what you are know, those names? bank accounts. Okay. You don't need bank accounts. You don't need a motor license. You don't need a driver's license. I get around without a license. When the police pull me up, uh -huh. if they want to give me a fine, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to throw it in the bin anyway. That's my choice. I've, I'm living by my motto, which is peaceful non-compliance. I don't care if the IRS has a badge and the policeman has a badge and a gun and a taser and a, and a Humpty Dumpty clown suit. I don't care. I live by peaceful non-compliance. In this universe, I will always live by the laws of do no harm to others, and I am my own king, God, sovereign, whatever you want to call it, I'm free. So when they pull me up, uh -huh. I'm peacefully non-complying with them. Okay. If they want a name, they can check my, I don't know how, but they can do their checks and, but do you give, can, do you give them your name? You say I'm um, Santos Bonacci, or you just don't answer that? No, I tell them you can call me Sam. You can call me Tom today. I'll I'll answer to that. And they don't like it. I've done this many times. They don't like it. They get aggressive. Some of them are nice. Some of them get frustrated. Others are bullies, and they get violent. Um, but that's not my problem. My problem. I'm peaceful, and I'm peacefully non-complying. So the warning is there to your listeners. You have to be prepared to lose this world, all of it. Totally get out of it. Remove yourself from it. It's corrupt. It's putrid. It's going nowhere. It will self-implode and self-destruct. Within months, you will see a whole new world before your eyes. In fact, from May the 20th, Big stuff is going to happen in this world. The The whole system will be rocked to its foundation. So you may, <laughs> you may as well take this attitude. You may as well live like I am anyway because that's the way of the future. In the age of Aquarius, there will be none of, this, none of these fictions. Uh, Rome, will, um, Rome will be gone forever. You might as well start now. Uh -huh. But if you're going to start now, please tune in. To this weekend's show because Mark Hollywood has gone into court many times uh -huh. and and he has walked out of there. All he's done is brought his notarized, apostille, certified documents and he said to the judge, turn around, sign it, you've been paid, I'm out of here, we've got no more business. 
-hmm. because those papers are worth trillions of dollars. You can pay for trillions of dollars of damage in the fictional world that they've created with those documents. And he will kindly take us through the whole procedure. Unfortunately, the Denike ultimatum was, was not able to bring us to that point where you can pay. But, but it also, it has its intent and it does work in many, many areas. But if you're looking for the ultimate non plus ultra, this is it. Santos, but what do you mean, be prepared to lose all your names, uh, all your, um, what do you mean, uh, not to have a bank account? Because people will say, well, what do you mean? Where will I keep my money? <laughs> you know, where, where would I keep my, my dollar? Should I go uh, underneath my, my mattress? But, but then I, you know, I live in a country that is not safe or, you know, the crime and so forth. And someone may break into my house and steal my cash. I mean, can, can you clarify, what do you mean, be prepared to lose all your names? Right. Well, what I've done, this is what I've done. I have a good support system around me. I have, I'm using, you know, like I will use someone else's bank account that, like my wife, for instance, that does not want to lose the name. Um, there, there are people around you, good, loving people that will support you. You see, um, you, you have to be prepared to lose all those attachments of commerce from this world. The bank accounts are exactly that. They are just, they're just commerce. Um, driver's license. Why do you need a, a license to travel? In the universe, mm, there's no such thing as begging to have to go from A to B. So what is a license to drive? Well, driving is commerce. It's a commercial activity. So unless, if you're going to visit your, your cousin's 30 kilometers down the road in another village. Well, you're just travelling to your cousin's house. You're not doing commerce, so you don't need a licence. So when the policeman pulls you up and says, where's your licence? Can I see your ID? And all of this crap in their, com in their commercial fictional world because they're just tax collectors for the Vatican. Um, well, well, I'm just travelling, sir. I'm just um, voyaging, journeying. I don't use the, the word drive because in the dictionary, driving is to do commerce and you need a license to do commerce, you see? So, it's either the world of commerce or the world of freedom. If you want those little bits of money and you want those little, um, you know, uh, benefits that you get from doing commerce, well, you're going to get benefits, all right. <laughs> um, so, my motto is freedom and uh, peaceful non-compliance. I'm withdrawing totally from... By the way, I haven't totally... Obviously, I haven't done the, the process completely as Mark Hollywood has it. Uh, it's coming. But um, because I know who I am and because I don't comply, uh, I'm getting by anyway because I know how to. Um, but but at the same, by the same token, all of your listeners that, that are uh, contemplating doing this, um, need to know the process properly and need to be ready to withdraw from this world and commerce and this system. Mm -hmm. Santos, I think that um, to add to that, uh, um, because a, a lot of the critics would say, yeah, 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 sure, it's easy for him to say, and, you know, he doesn't have to support five kids, and he doesn't, you know, he has two kids in college, and he has to pay a car, and, and you know, I have a business to run and so forth. But... But I think that the, 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 one of the other things I would add to that is, um, is, is to begin to understand uh, who you are, right? Because mainly that's also one of the primary uh, principles in this understanding of, of, of this fraud that, that, that uh, they perpetrated on us is to understand what's your role in this system, right? That you are a human being, you're not a corporation, you're not, you know, a vessel. And... So uh, in addition to that is, is to begin to understand who you are uh, internally <laughs> within your family structure and then to understand these other topics because I, 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 I could just imagine yeah. right now all the emails I'm going to get. It's like, yeah, that guy's just saying this. You know, it's easy for him to say. But, you know, for us just to, to, to you know, to, to take my money out of the bank and, and you know, how am I going to pay this and pay that? Mm. They, they, it's a little overwhelming, you know, especially it for is. people who are stuck in the system. You know, I, I was... Uh, 
look, Go ahead. it's taken me, it's taken me four years just, just to set myself up. I mean, wow, it is. It's overwhelming. The system has permeated every aspect of our lives. But, but all the listeners have to do is one thing. Just know who they are. Know that you were born free. In reality, you are flesh, blood. You're not the body. You are an eternal, immortal spirit and soul. And that spirit will live forever. The body will not. The trick that they have, they have pulled over us is that they have caused us to believe that we are these bodies. These bodies are transient vessels. Just like when you jump in the car to go from A to B. It's just a car. You don't believe that you're your car when you're driving in your car. You don't think, oh, now I'm all of a sudden I'm this car. No, you're the spirit inside the car that's going from one place to another and you're just using that body, that vessel. These bodies are not who we are. They are a small part of who we are. It's 10%, not even. And, and they grow old and decay and then they die. But the spirit lives on. I know a lot of people don't believe that. You don't have to believe it. I know it. I know this. I don't believe it. <clears throat> now, the, there are many ways of knowing who you really are. And meditation teaches you who you really are. Because you can have out-of-body experiences when you meditate properly. And that gives you the information that you need. When you realize that you're, you can actually you can <laughs> travel the whole universe, you can, you can leave these bodies temporarily and have out-of-body experiences, then you realize what the body is. It's just a vessel. It's a great vessel. It's a great creation. It's magnificent how spirit, soul, and body come into one and, and interact and, and, and do all these beautiful things. But the world of commerce has stolen our true identity and sovereignty. We were given it in the first place. In the Bible, it says it clearly. And God made man and woman, and he gave them dominion over the animals, over the seas, over the land, and, and, and he, over the earth. Why? Because we are the masterpiece on this planet. We are the spirits who, who have incarnated here, not to be enslaved by Rome to have a number on a license, on a birth certificate. That's like branding a cow. Have you seen those, those cows that get branded on the face with that, with that hot metal and they scream at the tops of their voice and they've got this number on their faces forever? That's what a birth certificate is. It's a branding. And Rome harvests the souls. As I said before, Rome pays $7 million per securitized bond, which is a birth certificate, and then goes off and makes $1.2 billion. Is that good? Do you want to be a part of that system? Oh, no, no, no. I'm not in that. No way. I'm not going to be a part of that. I'm not a part of slavery. I'm not, going to, I'm not complying with that at all. That's my decision. Santos, uh, Kurt Kallenbach, uh, who has done a lot of work also on this sovereignty movement, he he says this is which I find it very very com comical, but it's so true. He says that the Vatican City is the spiritual devils, London City is the banking money crown devils, and the District of Columbia, uh, D.C. Washington D.C. is the army force devils. Would would you agree with that? Oh yeah, um, and I would I would recommend for people to watch this movie. I would recommend for people to please watch this today on the internet. You can get it for free. The Ring of Power. Watch it, and it talks about these three cities, and it talks about their supposed power over the waters and the lands of the earth. And then I would watch this film. Then I would watch this. 
You see, I have the originals of all of the videos. I've got hundreds and hundreds of DVDs here. The Money Masters, please. And then I would watch this esoteric agenda and get free. Please live free. Peacefully non-comply. Look what Ireland's doing now. Look what Iceland's doing. They said, hey, banksters, go and get effed. <laughs> Ireland now they're kicking around saying don't pay Greece don't pay these countries have been shafted by the banksters who live in in Switzerland and they're smoking their 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 Cuban cigars they're jet setting around the world with their bank accounts and and in Switzerland it's all about crime and commerce and it's putrid and billions of people on this planet are starving to death because of these banksters. And we are giving them support by doing commerce with them. That's all I can say. I mean, my sovereignty comes from a very, very metaphysical and spiritual um, uh, perspective. All these other guys like Franco Collins, um, well, Franco Collins is also coming from a spiritual perspective. Dean Clifford. Um, there's a lot of guys out there. Um, Mark Hollywood, Kate of Gaia. Many now are turning to the spiritual perspective of sovereignty because we know who we are. Our, our bodies are just containers for these souls and spirits. And they're just temporary and transient. We've we got to lose the idea of trying to own things like mm. houses and, and cars and molecules. It's all just a bunch of molecules, transient molecules just moving through the universe. And our souls will always be there to witness every life and creation that we manifest into. Here we are, we've come onto this planet and there's a bunch of thugs who are harvesting our energy via this world of commerce and we've bought into it because we've had the greed in our hearts to want to own things and possess things. We can't own anything. You can only use stuff. Right. And it, uh, one of these things that you're, you're, what you're talking about, Santos, uh, I just saw um, a very short documentary where uh, David Icke, uh, I guess they were accusing him that he lives on this mansion and he drives around on a, on a Rolls Royce and he had the camera follow him to his little flat apartment where he lives in, in, in England, which is a modest, very small apartment, you know, where, where you can see it's like, wow, this is kind of tiny. He drives a, a Mazda, a small little Mazda, and, and he was pointing out the same thing that, that you're saying, you know. Uh, people are accusing him that, you know, he's a wealthy multimillionaire and all the money that he's making. When in reality, that's not what he's doing. No? Uh, and, it, and when you start looking at things, it's like, well, you know, I do need a place to live. I need a bed to sleep in. I mean, I don't, we're not encouraging anyone to go live like a, you know, like a, a poor guy in the streets. But I mean, how many houses do we need? I mean, do we need, you know, a, a three acre home? Uh, I mean, do we need uh, two houses on the beach? Do we need, a, uh, you know, 3,000 square foot home in the country? I mean, do we need to have six cars? And at the end of the day, you look and and, uh, and these people are just not happy. You know, they have all the toys mm -hmm. in the world. They have all the money, but yet they're not happy. I see this every day. A good friend of mine is a therapist and uh, she takes care of a lot of wealthy people and especially their kids. And I mean, they have ex 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 huge amounts of money. You know, I mean, these guys make, you know, here in Ecuador, you know, something like $200,000 a month, which is <laughs> it's like, you know, a million dollars in the United States or in Australia. And yet their kids are all screwed up, you know, they, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're dysfunctional, you know, and uh, they're just so worried about having all the toys that somehow they forget about their kids. But let, let's get yeah. into into the terminology a little bit, Santos. We have a few minutes, but... Um, for example, uh, when we go to court, right, uh, what we think, people that don't know this, we go into court, we see the judge, the judge is the authority there, correct? We are the, 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 uh, the accused, <laughs> when in reality, that's not the case, 
right? So how do we define the roles in court? Like who is the beneficiary? Who is the trustee? Who is the, the president of this uh, situation when we go into a court, Santos? Yeah, okay. Um, well, if, you, if you're going to go to court, uh, you, need to, you need to understand that uh, there's always three people that turn up, the trustee, the beneficiary, and the executor because they're dealing with trust law, you see, because it's all based on your trust, your Sestwi KV trust, which was put into place by the Vatican. They own it. So if, if you go in as the, um, the general executor and you appoint the judge as trustee, then now you have, you have made him the, or you have uh, appointed him to do the paperwork and to settle the accounting because he also is an employee of the corporation. He's just, he's just trying to trick you to make you understand him. You see, that's why he always says, do you understand? Because he's begging you, please, please be under me because if you're not under me when you come into this court, I can't contract with you. I can't steal your money. So c can you please understand? <laughs> and of course we say, yes, I understand, Your Honour, I understand. Well, when you do that, you, you stand under him, you see, and he is now able to pass sentence and give you a whole bunch of fines or throw you into prison, whatever. whatever. So if you're able to turn the tables and you can do this with your paperwork. It's quite easily. I've done it many times when I used to go to court. I don't go to court anymore because that's a place of commerce. I don't do commerce. <laughs> so, but if you're going to go because you have to go, I'd be studying up on these words and I would be going in as um, you know, the president and chief CEO of the corporation and as the general executor of the estate and things like that. Uh, so it puts them on notice that you're not going to be understanding them. And I would not go, I would not enter and go beyond the gates or go into their, into their, you see, when, I, when I've gone to court in the past, I've just stood up at the back and the, and the magistrate says, will you please come forward, I can't hear you. And I just say, I will speak loudly for everyone to hear me. Come forward, he says. And I say, I'm happy where I am. Thank you very much. Because what I've done is I've stayed in, in the jurisdiction of the land, you see, where they have no jurisdiction. So once you cross the bar, once you cross over, and they want you to go near that table, they want you to go past those chairs, at all costs, because then you're on their ship, then you have a title, Mr. Bonacci, and it doesn't matter if you say, I am not the name, you're already on their ship, so you're a mister, and you're a slave. You see, that's how the words get you. And, um, and you're going in there, and, and once you've done that, you're already a criminal in their system, because you're using their intellectual property which is the registered name. It's all theirs. They own the original. You see, you only have a certified copy of the birth certificate, so they own the one that's printed on bond paper. Therefore, they can treat you as a criminal if they like. So, in, in effect, there is no remedy in court. There is no remedy whatsoever for a citizen. Uh, so... So if you're going to go to court, I would be doing that with your paperwork. I would notify them. I would call you. I wouldn't be calling yourself Mr. Santo Bonacci. I would be calling myself the um, the occupier, the occupant. I think that's correct. Yeah, because you occupy the um, the office of sovereign. You see, or the general executor, and that usually works. Um, Dean Clifford's having a lot of success with this and uh, a lot of people are using that technology and winning because they're not going to be, they're not going to be um, 
uh, it's not going to be easy for the judge, let's put it that way, to continue if you know who you are and you're going to court as the general executor. It's going to be a little bit more difficult for them. Nonetheless, they can still put your ass into jail if they want to because they've still got the, the, um, the, upper, the upper hand. Right. Okay, so in, in other words, uh, not don't cross. I mean, obviously, we're, we're, we're talking about this because you need to, folks that are listening to this, you need to research a little bit more on this. But it, it makes sense, right? You, you're coming into their territory once you're on their vessel, as you say. Then, uh, you know, now you got to abide by the laws that, you know, I place in my house, <laughs> basically, right? Uh, yeah. So if you stay outside and you assign the the names or the roles right in this case that the judge in this case has to be the the trustee right what does the trustee do he's got to obey what the beneficiary or the executor orders right just like in a company right yeah 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 um, oh yeah yeah um, there are, there are a lot of people going to in going into court now and uh appointing the judge's trustee and telling them to do the paperwork yeah you sort out the paperwork mm -hmm. my business is finished Bye-bye. And some of them are arresting the judges. There was a case in Western Australia here just a couple of days ago. Uh, there was a guy who um, they all the people that turned up, all the sovereigns, there was about 30 in the court, and they notified the judge that he is a criminal and he has no right to hear the case because he is an officer, he is an employee of a corporation, and he is not representing the crown and the queen. Therefore, you cannot sit on the bench. And he said that to the judge, and he was in there for half an hour. And at the end, the judge just overruled and, and just ignored him. And the, the sovereigns that were in court said, arrest the judge, arrest the judge. They were demanding to arrest the judge. This is going to go on much more in the world from now on because people are waking up. These magistrates need to be arrested thrown into judge into into jails and they will be and the call has to go out to these poor magistrates well yeah they are poor <laughs> their souls must be very poor for all the young boys that they've thrown into jail for cannabis possession for for doing no harm to another living soul and yet the judges are quite happy to do harm to these young boys for you know traffic offences and everything, throw them into jail. These magistrates and judges need to get out now. Need to change sides now and align themselves with the truth and love of the universe because their jobs are criminal. Their system is criminal. It's a criminal system. That's why they have such things as you know the criminal justice department. In America, I think there's something called the Criminal Justice Department. It's not the American Justice Department. It's the Criminal Justice Department. Ha! Hallelujah. They're telling you. They're, they're hiding it in plain sight, what they're doing. They are a bunch of criminals. The bar, for instance, all the attorneys, they all work for the bar. They're all members of the bar. The bar is an English, an English association. It's a foreign agency. What are they doing sitting in our courts? These people have alliances and allegiances not to you and your country. And they need to be thrown in jail and they will be. All of this will happen. We'll be living in a non-commerce world in the very near future where we use and share and not buy and own. This whole concept, the concept of ownership is an aberration in the whole universe. <laughs> it's an aberration. It's just, it's so childish to think, oh, I own this and I own that. You can, you can only use this and that. It's impossible uh -huh. to own a molecule, just not even mm. an atom. How can, you, how can you contain it? Where do you put it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, just, uh, just look up uh, Judge Mark Carverello or Civarello, I forget his name, uh, in Lucerne County, Pennsylvania. He was uh, caught, how, I don't know, but they caught him. Uh, kids for cash. He was sending kids uh, for cash. I and mean, he was 
sending, I think he sent more than 500 kids, 14, 15 year old kids for just spitting on the sidewalk. You know, he was giving them six months because he had a contract with, with the local uh, jails there. They were privately owned to send these kids and he was getting kicked back. You know, so I mean, it's, it's, it's horrific what, what you hear about these, these criminals because they are criminals and they should be sent to jail so they can get a taste of what they've done to innocent uh, folks. Uh, Santos, once again, thank you, uh, my friend. The, uh, that day that your uh, your friend Mark Hollywood is going to be, it's on Saturday at 5 p.m. Central Time, you said, yes? Yes. And that's, uh, what's the name of the radio station? American Freedom Radio. You can click onto the link on my universaltruthschool.com website. American Freedom Radio this Saturday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Very good. And maybe we can have him here as well so uh, we can get a little bit of his uh, uh, knowledge as well here on Quantum Leap Television Santos. Maybe you can make that happen for us. Yep. Okay, I'll Santos. Do it right now. Thank you very much once again uh, for your excellent work. And, uh, folks, I would I do would suggest that you go into Santos' website, uh, universaltruthschool.com, and look at all the documents that he has that he, we've been talking about and uh, search for yourself and come to your own conclusions. But for sure, we can agree that something needs to change. This system cannot continue to work the way it is. And as Santos has pointed it out so much, is inevitable. It is going to change. And I hope uh, things do change, Santos. And I'll keep my word. I will build you a statue if this whole system collapses in a couple of months, as you are predicting. Thank you once again, Santos. And I'll see you on Wednesday for our Spanish show. Thank you. Ciao. Okay, folks, that's uh, going to do it for us. Thank you for being here with us one uh, more evening. i uh, just like to remind you to see us live Monday through Thursday. You can see us here on Facebook and in our website, qlpmultimedia.com. And in Facebook, if you're not, uh, we're, if you, we're not, uh, we don't have you as a friend, you can send us your invitations at qlpmultimedia at gmail.com. And, of course, you can watch all of our programs in our YouTube channel, QL Television. You have yourself a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. and in Canada for our Spanish show, La Hora de la Verdad. Take care.